All right, just out for an easy run. Walking a little bit right now. Um, had a really awesome hard session at the track yesterday. Just six times 800 meters at VO2 max pace. It's really awesome. Uh, so I've started my build up now to Oslo half marathon, my next race, which is in, I think, eight weeks or something like that. So I thought I'd show you guys some more details about my build up. I've done a few changes from my last video where I talked about my plan because that's part of the game you know when you're when you're doing training plans you have to be able to always change them when you learn more and now I've learned more I've gained more experience and I uh, have done a few changes so let's get right into it let's talk about my training plan let's talk about my build up to my next half marathon stay tuned All right, guys, so my um, half marathon buildup is well underway. Uh, as you know, I did my uh, first half marathon a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen the video, you can uh, check it out here. Um, and it was glorious. It was amazing and it was cool. And But that was only uh, one of the half marathons I've scheduled for this year. I have another one coming up now in September, on September the 15th. Uh, and it's on a road. Uh, it's on the road. Uh, it's Oslo half marathon, basically. Um, it's fairly flat. I wish it was a little bit flatter, though, because I really want a good time for me at this point. But um, yeah, it is what it is. There's a few hills in there. So I'd like to just quickly take a look at my training uh, over the last couple of weeks and what my plans are for the next few weeks. So let's head over to Strava and take a look what's going on there. All right, so here we are in Strava. And uh, first of all, if you don't know about Strava, uh, I suggest you go to strava.com and sign up there. And you can follow me and that way. You can take a look at all my training and uh, read all my descriptions. I write a little bit of a report after each uh, session that I do. So uh, be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description. Uh, so these are my last uh, few weeks. Uh, this is today, Wednesday. Uh, I had a tough session yesterday and I've been pretty much doing, you know, this, this here, you can see here that the red there, that's my, that's my half marathon a few weeks ago. And then uh, I had a bit of a rest. And then um, after that bit of a rest, uh, I started building up again to 60k, which was my pre uh, pre-race sort of max volume here you can see 60 60 60 and did a few workouts for sure um, and then um, after building up to 60 without any special workouts or anything like that I started my uh, nine week build up to Oslo half marathon including a two week taper so let's take a look at the first week I uh, did a few uh, sessions here you can see the yellow that's like a workout okay and the dark green that's like a long run and the normal green, light green, that's more, that's just like normal easy runs uh, or warm up and cool down as you can see here. So started the week with a real VO2 max interval session. You can see it here, we can go and take a look. This is what you'll see if you're on Strava. Uh, you can read my description there, what I experienced during my VO2 max session. Running at the track as you can see here. And here's the pace graph. We can add the heart rate as well. So uh, you can see here that I'm running at a pace that's pretty fast for me anyway. Three, 345 pace on average per kilometer. And my heart rate goes up towards my max, you know, in the, in the 190s. My max is probably around 205 or something like that. So working pretty hard, doing six reps of 800 meters. And that was tough. That was a tough session. Um, and um, for the next two days, then I just had two easy runs, super easy, just recovering. You know, that's important. After a hard day, you want to do a few easy days. Um, then my next workout was a lactate threshold workout, also done at the track. Here you can see. Um, so four repetitions of, let's see what it was here four times five minute at lactate threshold and four times 200 meter at the end just doing some speed work at the end so you can see here that we have uh, the first four repetitions are at lactate threshold bam 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 one uh, five minutes each cruising at around four 
15 pace per kilometer or something like that, 420 maybe. Uh, heart rate is up at around 186, 188, uh, probably around my lactate threshold somewhere. Pretty hard, but more like comfortably hard. You know, it's not as hard as the VO2 max uh, intervals, so I can do them for a little bit longer. Um, the volume of this workout is a little bit higher than the other one. Still doing it at the track though, because I wanted to have like a very fixed, uh, you know, I wanted to see my progress very clearly. And interestingly enough, I noticed in this workout that the VO2 max workout I did three days earlier, already there was adaptions happening. Like my, my, um, my resting heart rate in the morning was down like four beats two days after the VO2 max session. So that's, that's pretty significant. You know, quick adaptions, things happen very quickly when you do these high intensity sessions, but then again, uh, they're very taxing as well. So you can't really do, you know, too much of them, you have to be careful, uh, but they are essential in a progress plan. Finishing off the session with like some short 200 meter reps, you can see here, just touching on really fast pace, like 310, 320 pace, something like that. Almost sprinting, basically, uh, almost. So uh, that's a good session there. Anyway, we're, we're not gonna talk about all the details in my training, but that was the first week of my proper build up to that um, half marathon in September. Did a long run on Sunday, and then yesterday I was at the track again and did another VO2 max session. Basically the same workout. Uh, and I filmed the video there. I, I actually made a vlog and I'm posting that vlog uh, soon. So stay tuned for that vlog. And if you didn't watch the vlog that I made from a workout back here somewhere, I don't know, I think it was this one, back, uh, Quite a few weeks ago, I had, a, I had a speed session at the track, made a vlog, and I'll put a link to it here so you can check it out. Anyway, that's that's what has been going on until now. Let's head over into my training plan and just take a look at what I'm going to do for the next uh, few weeks. So, um, let's see. Uh, this week was the week of my um, half marathon. This was my recovery week. This was my rebuilding week getting up to 60k this was last week and this is this week so I'm um, now this workout here six times 800 and that's what I did yesterday so that means I have another I have the rest of this week and I have one two three four five weeks more of hard training followed by two weeks of taper and then Oslo half marathon uh, is on the wait, oops it's on the 15th there of September. Um, I don't know what to expect. I, I, I'm gonna run, I, I, you know, my last half marathon, I ran 146. I think I could have done one, maybe 44, if I paced myself better, maybe 143 even. And if it was a flat course, maybe I could have done 138. I don't know. Um, can I do 135, 134 for Oslo half marathon? That's what I'm kind of thinking. Um, but I'm dreaming about going sub 130 though, but I don't know if that's possible for me at this point. We'll see, we'll see. Depends on how my body reacts to all the training that I'm doing now. And it's very warm, so it's difficult for me to tell my actual fitness because it might, hopefully I'll get a cool day in September and I'll perform better than I do now in the heat. Um, anyway, we're not going to go through all the workouts, just want to quickly talk about the weeks leading up to the half marathon. So. We have um, yesterday's workout, and then on Friday I'm doing a threshold session again. Basically, I'm doing the same threshold session as last week in terms of volume, 20 minutes at threshold. But instead of doing it four times five minutes, I'm now going two times 10 minutes. So working a little bit more on that endurance while keeping the volume the same, really. It's still 20 minutes at threshold, but it's extending it to 10 minutes rather than five and you know working on that endurance. Um, yeah, then a uh, week after, uh, another hard workout, uh, and then I'm doing a progressive long run on sun on that Sunday, which means I'm going to start easy and finish at threshold. And I'm also going to visit, uh, possible race pace within there as well. So, uh, that's going to be an interesting workout to see where I'm at in terms of race pace and how I can maintain that after a fair few kilometers. And this week is actually at, I'm at the cabin this week. So I'll be um, training a little differently and stuff like that. So then after that, I'm doing somewhat of a recovery week after that progressive long run and then finishing off the week with a race actually. 
I have a race on the 12th of August. It's called Bringebærløpe, which is like a, the raspberry raspberry run. Uh, it's a raspberry festival here in my hometown. It's just 6k. Um, it's a hard run, of course, because it's short. It's very it's very fast. But I'm I'm actually just going to race it as a as a threshold session, like a training session. So it's gonna I'm gonna throw in some easy. Basically, I'm doing it like this. I'm aiming on 30 minutes. I'm gonna it's a, there's a lot of hills. Um, I'm gonna do eight minutes at threshold, one minute easy. Eight minutes at threshold, one minute easy. Three minutes of interval speed, so max VO to max speed, then one minute easy, and then I'm gonna finish off with four to eight minutes at threshold, whatever it takes to finish the race. So it's gonna be a high intensity session after somewhat of an easy week. Then comes into this week uh, where I'm starting my next mesocycle, because if you look here, these first three weeks that I'm in now, that's my VO2 max focus. Uh, then my la ne next three weeks is the threshold. And I, I know if you watched my previous video where I talked about my build-up, you might have seen this already, but I've made a few adjustments. Because you always make adjustments along the way with training plans, you know. They, things change, you learn things, you, you adapt faster or slower than you expected, and you have to constantly fix that training plan. So, so this last um, period here is where I'll be doing... Um, yeah, I'll be extending the temp uh, the threshold session to further, longer and longer, and more reps, more volume, essentially, and increasing the the VO two max sessions a little bit as well, but not much because it's really a threshold focus here. Then I'll be going on a cruise with my grandparents and my parents. Uh, my dad is um, turning sixty, and uh, I'll be training on a boat. I'll be making vlogs for sure. <laughs> And uh, that'll be interesting. And I'll also do a progressive long run up in uh, the very, very north of Norway. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully it's going to be cool there. Not cold, but cool. Um, anyway, yeah. Finishing off three hard weeks with uh, two weeks of taper. Where I'll be doing, you know, I'll be doing hard stuff, but very short. Like I'll reduce the volume of my training, but I'll maintain some of that intensity. Uh, tapering is a science in and of itself. We can talk about that in another video. But anyway, as you see, I've written last week needs revision. Maybe second last week too. I need to take a closer look at what I'm gonna do in these tapering weeks as it gets closer, based on how the last three weeks go. Right? Maybe I need more rest because I'm like, I'm a, I need more rest. I, I have to feel it in my body. I have to think about it. Or maybe I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more hard stuff. Well, you know, it it has to be it remains to be seen. Um, long runs, as you can see here, these are the long runs. Uh, they will go up and up and up and reach 20k. Do a couple of 20k long runs before uh, tapering down before the half marathon. So I, I think it's a pretty decent plan um, for sure. I I personally love making training plans. I've probably spent ah 12 hours on this plan like because it looks like oh just like throwing in numbers and three times to five minutes or you know it's not actually like that it, it you really have to consider you know what did i do last week what am i doing next week what's the total training load of those of those three weeks um okay i'm coming back to the same workout should i increase the volume a little bit how many reps should i do at what speed should i do it what's my current fitness it's there's a lot of things to consider so it takes time but i do like it i, I think it's a lot of fun um i've made a few training plans for other people as well and i i'm going to launch a full coaching program on this on this channel eventually i'm working on it kind of uh, but if you're interested before that to to get my help, you know maybe you're working towards a 10k or or a 5k even or, or a half marathon or a marathon, um, I do have a, a lot of knowledge when it comes to planning training sessions and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, uh, you know send me a, a message maybe on Facebook or to the loan trail uh, Facebook page and you can send me a message there and we can discuss prices and stuff like that I can help you at setting up a you know just a simple training program for you or maybe we'll do a full-on coaching program you know where you'll have sessions with me on Skype and and I'll, I'll customize a program just for you it depends on what you're interested in anyway um, I'm excited about the, uh, the build-up I love the hard training it's so much fun. I mean, it's it's it, it's hard. I mean, I, yesterday at the track, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. This is too hard. But that's how it should be, right? I mean, it should really, 
It should be um, voluntary suffering. <laughs> but the gains, they come. You know, it's very, it's very clear that I'm gaining fitness. And uh, so if you're interested in following that journey, you should head over to Strava.com. There's a link in the description where you can follow my training there. And Instagram. I'm on Instagram too where I post pictures from my training and my life in general. Anyway, thanks for watching this much of the video. I know uh, it's not that popular sometimes to these long uh, videos where I just talk about my training details. But if you're watching this far, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you're interested in these things as well. And you like this kind of detailed uh, stuff. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you do. If you, if, you, if you follow a training plan, if you like making training plans. Um, any questions, post them down below. And subscribe, of course, if you watch this far without having subscribed. It's it's a good idea to click the subscribe button. Hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.